Okay, so we're going to use a Chrome extension called Requestly in order to modify our headers. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Requestly Chrome extension. And then I'm going to go ahead and download that. Add to Chrome, add extension. Okay, it's gonna show up under this puzzle piece here. We're gonna click it, we can pin it if we want to show up here. I'm gonna open it up. So there's all different kinds of rules that we could set as far as headers go. Adding, deleting, modifying, uh, request response, so what we're going to do is we're going to modify a header that's used by every application called the user agent. The user agent is dictated by the client and helps the server understand the device. So the user agent is used to tell what browser, what version of browser, or what application, what web, what native application, uh, what, what device is being used, that sort of thing. So one thing we could do here is if we go to, for instance, um, youtube.com, youtube.com uses user agent to determine if they should show a mobile responsive website or the standard desktop website. So right now it's showing us the standard desktop website. But if we augmented the user agent to indicate that we're on a mobile device, then I think YouTube's going to return the mobile website. So let's go ahead and prove that out. So I'm going to come back over to Requestly. We're going to go to Create My First Rule. And we're going to use Modify. Modify Headers. And basically, you can put in all these different conditions of when you want it to drop the header. So we're going to say, um, if the URL contains the word YouTube, uh, we don't want to do this on every single page, then on the request, we're going to modify. Uh, the name of the header is user-agent. Actually, let's open up another tab here just so I can show you. Um, so if I go over to google.com, and if I do command option I or F12 on a PC, this is going to show network traffic, and network traffic will show headers. So if I refresh the page, and then I click the request for the document, the markup of this page, and then I toggle over to headers, these are all the headers. General are headers that are issued on every single request, and then you have additional headers. Now, headers come back on HTTP requests. These are response headers, but they also go out when I requested, when I made the get request for www.google.com, we actually uh, put headers in there. And a lot of people don't know that cookies are just headers. Uh, there's a header called cookie, and you just append the quote unquote cookies there. I guess they're a special header, but they're just headers. But this is the one we're looking for user agent. So as a desktop, my user agent was this guy here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to emulator, and I'm going to say, emulate an iPhone 10 and that's going to do a number of things but one of the things it's going to do is it's going to modify the user agent header so I'm refreshing the page coming down to re request headers user agent so this user agent is tied to an iPhone 10 device so now that I have that I'm going to copy that I'm going to bring it over to here and so this rule is saying when you find a user agent header in the request, if the domain contains YouTube, then switch it out for this uh, value here, which is going to spoof an iPhone 10 device. So let's go over to create rule. Um, let's call it iPhone 10. And let's go ahead and turn off emulation here, turn off this. 
And let's go over to rules. Let's make sure that it's on. It is. So I'm going to just reload YouTube and see if YouTube picks up on that. And you can note it did. So we got redirected to m.youtube, which is like a mobile optimized version of YouTube. Because YouTube now thinks we're an iPhone 10. And if I wanted to confirm that Requestly was in fact dropping the header as expected, we could just go through that same process as before. So I, re I refresh the page. And on the outbound request headers, I ought to see the user agent showing the value that I expect here, iPhone OS 13.2. And that should be what I have over here. So yeah, um, iPhone OS 13 underscore two. So we can see that it is in fact being replaced. So there's all different things you could do here, but this is just a quick example and I hope that's helpful. Thanks. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button and thanks for listening.